when i mean scx we'll say i'll say pineapple the seven different aspects of pineapple from a man's perspective i'm just gonna lay them out to you then we'll go through them all the necessity the obstacles the tactics the secrets the quality the attention and the disregard it's really important that you understand that the importance placed on it is severely more intense for guys than it is for you it is also going to make these guys do and say things that would seem unnecessary but to the guy it's necessary because he needs to get what he needs to get if i put you in a position where you hadn't eaten for three weeks right and you were literally down to one percent body fat and you could feel your organs shutting down you can barely get up and walk you know what i mean like you're lightheaded all the time your blood sugar is extremely low you haven't had any single morsel of food in three weeks and you've got a convenience store that's across the street that you know serves this delicious hot food even though you may have never stolen food a day in your life and you have may have never even thought about stealing food a day in your life on that third week when you haven't had anything to eat and you can feel your organs shutting down and you can barely even breathe breathing is too much is burning too much calories the only option you have in terms of food that you could even get yourself to is the convenience store across the street what are you most likely to do you're most likely to go to that convenience store and probably steal you something to eat even though you wouldn't necessarily always go out and steal even if you've never stolen in your life because you must have something to eat you go to the convenience store and you steal something now a light of rose says in the youtube chat is it really that extreme that is exactly why i gave you guys that example okay because it is that extreme it may not feel that extreme to you but it's not meant to feel that extreme to you right now i'm not saying at the same at the same rate let's so stay with me i'm not saying that men literally literally will pass away if they don't have pineapples what i am saying is that in the mind as it relates to the desire that they have to get that and receive that it is close to being that intense just because they're retaining or they're celibate that doesn't mean that they stop thinking about it that doesn't mean that it stops mattering to them what what's happening is they're identifying how much how big a role it plays in their life they're identifying how much time and energy they have been dedicating to it and they're actively right actively trying to work against that right and trying to get away from that right and stop themselves from just uh, viciously feeding into that desire the desire never stops the desire never goes away right the desire is always there laying dormant right it's just a matter of whether you feed that desire or not what do they do they go out looking for girls who are the most vulnerable or the most desperate right for attention and love and validation and they learn it's a learned behavior they learn how to maneuver in these relationships and these talking stages to extract pineapples right in some cases they also like you and want to spend time with you and are into you but in some cases they just want the pineapples because it's that important to them number two is the obstacles now the obstacles exist uh, uh, as a function of stopping these men from getting what they want which is pineapples now these obstacles range from a plethora of things okay these obstacles range from their own resources right Meaning, do they have money? If they don't have money, it's probably going to be harder for them to gain access to a lot of pineapples, right? Um, do they have, uh, are they attractive? Do they have straight teeth? Do they have white teeth? We also have things like, do you have a car? Are you able to travel? Um, do you, can you talk to people? Are you personable? Are you charismatic? Uh, you know, do you light up a room when you walk in? Do you have a lot of friends? Are you outgoing? Are you social? Uh, where do you, where do you hang out? Things like that, right? These are all obstacles in a way to getting pineapples, because if you have less or more of one of those traits or qualities, it make, it could make it harder to get pineapples. What's also an obstacle, obviously is women themselves, right? And whether or not they accept you as, uh, 
in, inside them, right? I don't know how else to say, whether or not they'd accept you inside them, right? And that's also all based on what I mentioned before, your resources. Are you rich? Do you have uh, some money? Do you have game? Can you talk? Are you personable? Are you charismatic? Are you persuasive? All that good stuff, right? Because the women can either say yes to you or no to you, right? So that's an obstacle uh, for men, right? So then number three, we have tactics. The tactics exist as a way to overcome these obstacles. Now, this is where I feel like I have to do a lot of more explaining because it's very important that we all are of the same understanding here, right? The tactics are a plethora of things that guys use to overcome these obstacles and in the places where they don't have as much, they use it as a strategy to get over that and through that. So, for example, what, um, what I mean by that is, let's say a guy is um, doesn't have a lot of money, right? He's not super rich. He can't take you on a trip to Turks and Caicos. He can't fly you out to Miami. He can't fly you out to L.A. He can't do the, book these trips for you and take you all these super nice places and drive a fancy car. Cool. He's going to have to come up with a tactic to be able to get access to more pineapples, even though at a deficit in other places in, the, in his life. So what does he do? He's got to up his amount of game. OK, he's got to up his amount of uh, physical attractiveness. He's probably got to go to the gym. He's probably got to um, have better stroke game. He's probably got to do more work. He's probably got to learn how to eat squirtle right? He's probably, you know what I mean? He's probably got to work on his physique. He's probably got to work on his ability to, to chat and be fun and be personable and be charismatic. Why? Because if he has a deficit in one area, that's an obstacle. That would be an obstacle to him getting more squirtle and more pineapples. Then he's going to have to compensate for that by making up for it in some other place in his life where he can have maybe a little bit more control of. Okay. And those tactics also also include lying to you. This is where I say we're going to get a little bit deeper as time goes on, right? The tactics also include lying to you, right? And telling you what you want to hear, right? This is where you come in. And this is where all the training and the things I've prepared you for comes in because the tactics is, is what will most likely get you defeated. Because the tactics are a battle against all the obstacles that they have, including you, to get what they want from you, right? And I'm not saying that's only it. I'm just saying that's part of it, right? In this battle of, oh, I want this from you. I want to extract this from you with the least amount of effort. And you trying to vet the situation and, and determine whether he's someone who you should be giving yourself to or not, right? It's like a push and pull. And so the guys form tactics like lying, right? like playing into a specific role, like telling you what you want to hear. And if you're not good at deciphering the lies, then you will get tricked a lot. This is where it comes in where I, what I, what I was talking to you guys about before. For those of you guys who are unfamiliar with the terminology, Disney princess syndrome. When you were a little kid, you watched on the TV. When you're a little kid, all your favorite Disney princess movies. And what were you seeing as the main themes in a lot of your favorite Disney princess movies? You were seeing a beautiful young princess get saved from her tallest tower and the tallest building and the tallest, most far, far away land ever. Um, you were seeing her get saved by the most capable, strong, handsome prince in the land. And he would come and he would sweep her off her feet, you know, just for being the most beautiful princess in the land. And he would whisk her off in, on his horse to a land far, far away. And they would live happily ever after. That was the gist of what you would watch as a child. Now, obviously, as a child, you have a lot of innocence. So you're, you're not aware that that's not what real relationships are actually like. So you internalize that as a child. Right. And then you grow up and you what else do you listen to? You you read what pad stories, right, which are dramatic and fantastical. You watch your favorite uh, romance movies, right, which are dramatic and fantastical. Um, you listen to apps like Episode, which are erotic, but still fantastical, just like Wattpad, right? You read your smut books, which are just like all the other things. They're just the grown-up version, right? They're all dramatic and fantastical and erotic and full of emotion. And just, you know, he just comes and he just wants you so much and there's so much passion and he just grips you and he just whisks you off away. And it's just, the, it's just so intense, right? Yeah. 
what happens is you internalize that, which is nothing wrong with it. Okay. We all internalize the things that we digest. You internalize that, right? But here's the problem. The guys grow up and after a while of learning um, women, learning relationships and learning dating, they realize that you have internalized that. And they also realize that the best way for them to get what they want from you, because we're on number three, we're on tactics. They realize that one of the best tactics to get what they want from you is to make you feel like you are living the fantasy or the Disney princess movie or the smut book or the Wattpad story that you have been so heavily invested in, right? So the, the better they can embody that character in your mind that you're thinking is your Wattpad story or your fantasy novel or your whatever, right? Or your Disney princess movie, right? The easier it will be for them to pull the wool over your eyes, right? Get you so overly emotional about them in the situation that you don't realize they're not actually truly invested in you. They're just trying to extract something from you, which is pineapples. Of course, you're Squirtle, right? Now, obviously, not every guy is that super crazy malicious. Some guys really do care about you and want to be there for the right reasons. I'm not saying that all guys are like that. What I am saying is that you can easily find yourself in that situation if you are not careful and patient by asking guys questions, being curious, getting a sense of who they really are, learning them, right? Giving it time to learn them, right? And allowing them to show you who they really are through actions and consistency of those actions, right? It requires time to really understand someone for real. It's not just a week thing. It's not just a couple day things. Don't let, and this is where I talk about one of the tactics, one of the big, one of the big tactics as it relates to Disney princess movies and all that stuff like that. One of the big tactics is that these guys will come into your life and they'll convince you that, Hey, I want to be with you so badly that I know it the first day that I've met you. You're such an amazing, beautiful princess, and I want to take you to a land far, far away. I know that I want you to be my wife, even though I just met you a couple days ago, right? But see, this is the crazy part. This is the most insane part. The other women in your life and just the world in general and the other men, everyone has made you believe that the guys who meet you after a couple of days and tell you, hey, I want to make you my wife, and I just met you a couple of days ago, but I already know because I just know. The world has convinced you that that's a good thing and you should go along with that. Oh, he knows what he wants. That's why he knows he wants to marry me after a couple of days. No, no, that's actually not how that works. Because if he knew he wanted to marry you and he wanted to marry you for what was truly inside of you, I'm not talking about inside of you here. I'm talking about inside of your heart and your soul and your spirit. I think we can all agree it would be impossible to actually know that in the span of a few days. And we're not even talking about really a few days because even throughout the days, it's not like he's going to be seeing you the entire day. So really hours. Okay. And we've broken down this math before. Um, we can do the quick math uh, over again, just so you guys can understand it, right? It's not very complicated. I'll, I'll get out my, my phone here so you guys can see what I mean when I say tactics. And when I talk about what the world has convinced you of, versus reality. Stay with me. It's easy math. Okay. Don't, don't get your, so don't start sweating. Okay. Don't start getting nervous. This is easy math. We'll all be able to get through this together. I just want to use this math as an example to really show you what's going on when these guys come to you and use one of the tactics. I've known you for a couple of days, but now I know you, I want you to be my wife. Okay. Let's imagine you're in a relationship, right? Where you've been dating this guy, right? You go on three dates per week. Let's just say for the sake of argument, you're going on three dinner dates per week which that's for a new relationship that's insane so you got three right here three dates per week let's say each dinner date lasts three hours okay that's insane for a dinner date but let's even say for the sake of argument each dinner date lasts three hours okay so obviously we got three times three i told you we're doing very very simple math here don't start sweating okay so you got nine hours okay that means in the span of each week, you are seeing each other nine hours a week, okay? For reference, the average work week, meaning if you have a full-time job, on average, that would mean you are working 40 hours a week, okay? 
Now imagine how much you could learn on a full-time job in the first week of that job, right? Imagine if you how familiar you would be with the job after the first week, okay? This is not even a part-time job, nine hours. This is how much time he spent with you in the week, okay? Now, let's imagine this man is telling you how much he wants to marry you after three months, okay? This is like, that's... Most of you guys would be like, three months is fair. You know, three months, I, I would get it. If he said he loved me and he wanted to marry me, three months, you know, that makes sense. You know, he, he'll get to know me a lot in the three months. Okay, let's, I'm not, I, I, won't, I won't argue with that, but let's just do some simple math, okay? In this scenario, you're going on three day, three dinner dates per week for three months. Three months straight, you go on three dinner dates per week. I want you to understand like that's insane already in itself. But for the sake of argument, we'll say that, okay? Four weeks in each month, right? Four times three, right, is 12. Meaning that there is 12 weeks, right, that you guys have available to see each other, okay? 12 weeks that you guys are seeing each other in that three months, okay? Easy math. Now, we have the nine here. For the amount of hours you guys are actually spending on these dates with each other, right? At a time. Nine hours per week, remember. So now we do nine times the 12 weeks, right? The 12 weeks because it's three months. So 12 weeks. The 12 weeks and we get 108. So this is the amount of hours that you have actually spent with that man. Okay, 108 hours you have actually spent with him in person, sitting with him at a dinner table, talking to him, even having the possibility of getting to know him. Not to mention there's loud music, not to mention you're eating, not to mention there's distractions. You might be on your phone. You might have to take a call. You might have to text a friend, do whatever. 108 hours you've even spent, like we would consider quality time where you can even get to know each other for real. Okay. If we divide 108 hours by 24, because obviously there's 24 hours in a day, right? So we can understand how many days you've actually spent with him. We have 4.5 days. 4.5 days you've spent with that man over the course of three months. And he told you that he wants to marry you after the first couple days of knowing you. We just did the math. If you went on three dinner dates per week for three months straight, you would have only spent four and a half days together. Now tell me in the chat. Tell me, all you beautiful, wonderful, intelligent, smart human beings, because I know you're so beautiful, intelligent, and smart. Do you think for yourself, answer for yourself, be honest with me. Do you think that you could determine who you want to spend the rest of your life with in four and a half days? I'm not saying this to embarrass you or scare you or make you feel bad about the, <laughs> the decisions you've made in the past. <clears throat> I just want you to understand how your emotions, because we're all emotional, how your emotions will take over your logic. But when we sit down together and we're not as emotional because we're not with the people that we love, right? When we can sit down together in a, in a quiet room, it's like a quiet room, and we can actually break down what's really happening, it be, the picture becomes so much clearer. Okay? And that's what I'm trying to show you in this example because even me don't like i'm a guy too even me i felt like oh my god i just met you and like oh my god i just feel like i know you from somewhere and we belong together and me and you forever and this and that and let's get married let's run off let's have we've all felt like that we're all emotional beings okay we're all emotional beings it doesn't mean you're a bad person because you're an emotional being i just want you to in the future, in the process of being emotional and caring and wanting to be swept off your feet, also understand, understand that it's your emotions at play more than it is what's actually happening or what's true. You understand what I'm saying? And that your emotions can play tricks on you, okay? And when I talk about the tactics, a lot of times these guys, right, 
will want to get you so emotional about the situation and about them that you stop being logical and you stop looking at things for what they are. You just look at things for how you feel about them. The men who are just trying to, you know, trick you by pulling the wool over your eyes and using that tactic of, oh, I want you right now. They'll be like, no, no, but it's so in- it's so intense. I can't think straight. It's just, I need you. To, I need to have you right now. This second, this second, this second. It's got to be this second. It's got to be this second. It can't be any other time in the future because I can't wait any longer. I just I want you so badly. And I just I need I need to marry you right now. We got to go to the church right now. Like I, I got to put a ring on your finger this second. If I can get a ring pop from the store, I'll propose to you right now. Can we do it right now? Like this second, I just I feel like I've met you like 35,000 times in 35 different lives. And it's just me and you forever. And they just make it seem like they're going crazy. Right. But when they make you feel like they're going crazy, you start you you want to be crazy with them. You, I, I guess you're crazy for me. So I'm crazy for you. We're crazy together. Ah, the crazy bunch. And then it's crazy how fast you give yourself up to him. And then you wonder how the switch up was as crazy as it was. Number four, right? We have, it's kind of related to what we talked about with the tactics. We have the secrets. The secrets are essentially the things that guys won't tell you because they know that it will make them harder. It would make it harder for them to receive pineapples from you. If it makes it harder for them to receive pineapples from you, they are more likely to keep it a secret. He's going to want to keep some secrets from you because he's not going to want you to know everything he's thinking. He's not going to want you to know uh, his whole entire plan. Now, granted, I will say not every man is smart enough to come up with this whole master plan of how he's going to extract pineapples from you and sit down and write it down and, you know, sit down and think about it and ponder on it and branch off and all these different possibilities. I'm not saying that they're evil supervillains for pineapples. That's not what I'm saying. Okay. What I am saying is that in the process of learning relationships, learning dating, learning uh, women, learning how to deal with them to get what they want, they also learn what they should and shouldn't say. It's just a learned behavior, right? And they learn that there are certain things they should refrain from saying or talking about. This is where we talk about something I've talked about to you guys in the past. They will probably, if they are someone who's actively chasing around pineapples, they'll refrain from telling you too much about their past relationships. Do you understand what I'm saying? Things like how their relationship with their ex ended or why it ended. They'll refrain from telling you things like they cheated or things like they were um, just, uh, you know, mistreating their past partners or they've been through a lot of talking stages, right? They've been through a lot of three month relationships, a lot of two month relationships, a lot of situationships. They're probably going to refrain from telling you about the last girl that they kind of left you know, on the fence because they don't really fully ever shut the door to any guy. I'm sorry, any guy. They don't ever really fully shut the the door to any girl, right? Because they want the ability to go back and forth as they choose and keep a roster of girls going. They're never going to tell you that. Let's be so for real. Let's be so for real. Because it goes back to what I said about the obstacles that creates another obstacle for them from getting what they want, which to them is a necessity. I always tell you guys to be asking as many questions as humanly possible. Do not go on these dates, in these talking stages, in these relationships, especially at the beginning with the mindset that, oh, I'm here to talk about myself and I'm here to share. I want to be a blabbermouth and yap, 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 yap. Because all you're going to do, all you're going to have at the end of the date is a good, warm, fuzzy feeling that, oh, I really like this guy. He's so nice and friendly, but you don't really know anything about him. And what ends up happening is all the good emotions and feelings that you have about that guy, you just project onto him because you spent all that time yapping about yourself. And so it made you feel good. So you think he's a good, amazing, great guy, but he actually hasn't told you anything about himself. You actually don't know anything about him or who he is or where he's been or any anything about anything, right? You just have a bunch of projected feelings that you put onto him and you're sitting here, right, afterwards like Boo Boo the Fool when you realize that none of that is who he actually is. So then we have number five, which is the quality the quality i'm referring to is the quality of each individual that these men are partaking in pineapples with not every single person that they partake in pineapples with is meant to be of high quality to them 
or high quality in, in terms of the relationship with that person that they're having pineapples with. Do you understand what I'm saying? And a lot of times, this is why I say the first, uh, the first four before this, this last fifth one, a lot of times the necessity, right, of it, right, the desire that they have of it is going to lead them to have lower quality sometimes simply because they desire it that much meaning that they they're not really so concerned about the relationship that they have with that person they're not really so concerned about the actual connection that they have with that person they're not really even so concerned about the future of the relationship after that person finds out that they've been lying or deceiving them they're just concerned with the right now and getting what they need right now at this second right because the desire is so high and the necessity feels so strong and intense that they can't think of anything else but getting what they want right now at this second, even if it's low quality, even if it's a one night stand. Obviously, we've all had one night. Well, I wouldn't say all of us, but obviously, you know, plenty of us have had one night stands. OK, and obviously pleasure plays a part in that. But I just want you guys to understand that the feeling of it being a necessity will also decrease the quality. The reason I bring up quality is because I know a lot of you guys are confused. A lot of you women, I always say guys, but I mean women, a lot of you women are confused about why do the guys choose the quote unquote hoes instead of choosing the high quality women or the higher value women? Why do they spend so much of their attention on the hoes instead of the high quality women? Well, not all the time quality matters to the man simply because the desire is so strong for most of them, right? The desire is so strong and for most of them it's uncontrollable, right? They can't control themselves. So they go out even seeking low quality connections just so that they can get access to more pineapples. So if they got to go and talk to someone that they really have no feelings for, that they really don't care about, even some that they don't really even find attractive just to gain more access to more pineapples, they'll do that. Number six, we have the attention. Now, very similar to the quality, the attention, right, is something that as a woman, you're taking in very different ways. What I mean by that is, let's say, for example, you have an Instagram model is very different from the attention he gives to a girl who he wants to marry, like genuinely wants to marry. Okay. The fun girl, quote unquote, we'll say it like that. The fun girl who's down for anything and with anything and doesn't care about anything and has no boundaries gets attention. And so does his wife, but the fun girl gets a very different type of attention than his wife does, right? Because the fun girl is not meant to be forever. The girl he wants to be his wife is meant to be forever. They both get attention, but it's very different types of attention. And a lot of times, right, what happens is the girls who are the wives get frustrated with the amount of attention that the man is giving to the fun girl, right? But the reality of it is you should be unshaken by the attention that guys give to the fun girl, because I guarantee you, I promise you, I cross my heart, hope to die. These men will eventually grow up and mature and realize that they do not want the fun girl at which time, even, even if, even if they mature and they go through a phase of wanting to be with and spend time with the fun girl, they will always eventually want to shift their focus back on the wife. It, it's just always happened. It's, it, it is inevitable in the, um, timeline of a man and his maturity and his mindset it is inevitable. The fun girl will only get attention for so long before the wife gets the attention. Even if the attention might shift for a periodically, temporarily, it always ends up going back to the wife. Now, the wife, we can consider a high quality woman who is not the fun girl, has morals and respects herself and is not down for anything, is not, is not, is not into the validation from the guy. So the validation is going to lead her to say yes to everything, right? The fun girl is the yes girl. She'll say yes to everything, right? The wife is probably going to say no to a lot of stuff because she has standards, right? The guy's going to go, oh man. But then he's going to realize that actually I respect the fact that she has morals and standards and I respect her enough to want her to be the mother of my children. This is what I'm saying. A mature man will realize that the only women he can respect in his life 
are the women that respect themselves. And those are the only type of women he's going to want to give the wife type of attention to, right? Don't be shaken by the different types of attention that guys give to girls. Number seven, and one of the most important ones, as it relates to how men view pineapples, is the disregard. When I say disregard, I mean the disregard for the things that they will put you through. They'll take from you because obviously in the process of them having pineapples with you, it's you giving yourself to the guy. They'll take from you emotionally, physically, mentally, spiritually, and they'll just disregard um, that and move on like it would like nothing happened, right? And that can be traumatic. And I understand that that can be traumatic, which is why we're all here to avoid you that trauma, because the disregard can be very painful. But the reality of it is the necessity of the desire to have pineapples, the obstacles they face, the, th the tactics they must use, the secrets they must keep, right? The quality they must worry about, the attention they give, all that stuff, right? At the end of the day, when they finally get what they want, a lot of times, if that's all they wanted, they will disregard of everything they had to go through to even get to that point and everything they had to put you through to get to that point because the desire is that great and that intense. I'm not saying whether that's a good thing or a bad thing or a right thing or a wrong thing or whatever, right? Because I'm, I'm in no place to judge anybody. But what I am saying is it's the truth a lot of the times. After they put you through that, they disregard of you because it was really mostly just about that. And everything else was about creating this facade to getting to this point. And I'm not saying that to uh, put you in fear, but I do in the process of when you go out on these dates and you meet these people, right? I want you to be skeptical about the people you're meeting. You're meeting strangers. You're going on dates with strangers you don't know them from a can of paint okay you can't verify who they are or where they've been especially for those of you guys who are dating people from like hinge or bumble things like that people from different cities right it's a lot easier to know someone that you went to high school with but for a lot of us in our 20s you know that are adults right you're dating people from different cities some of you guys from different countries you have no idea who these people are. No idea who these people are. And like, that's not meant to scare you or anything. That's meant to like, I want to shove into your head reality. You have no idea who these people are that you're going on dates with. Which is why I want to remind you that in three months of going on three dates a week, you've only spent four and a half days with them. That is still a stranger. <laughs> like, that's still a stranger. Okay. And, and, and like I said, it's not to put you in fear. I just want you to be cautious, right? And be skeptical. Give yourself the grace period and the time to be patient with yourself and the relationship to actually learn the person, actually get to know the person, actually understand the person, actually put them and, and, and put the relationship through these different situations so you can know, okay, this is actually who I want to spend the rest of my life with because I feel like I actually do know them. Not just, I feel good about them. Okay. Never one of the reasons when, when someone asks you, yo, why, why are you with so-and-so? Why do you love so-and-so? One of your answers should never be. I like their vibe. Ne never, never. And vice, I hate that. I hate when I hate when people are describing their relationship with someone or why they love someone and they talk about vibes. They talk, I like their vibe. Because when you truly know someone and you truly love them as a person, first of all, you've learned to love their flaws. That's number one. And you've learned to love everything that that person is, is, is. Their vibe is not who they are, right? They, each individual has specific character traits and personality traits that are unique to them that make them them. That's what you are in love with. That's what you're loving. And that takes time because we're all three-dimensional beings. We're all complex human beings with a plethora of thoughts and emotions that we feel on a daily, hourly, and minute-by-minute -minute basis. We're, we all have our own version of bipolar disorder because I want you to understand what's going through a man's mind, right? 
because the better you understand what's going through a man's mind, the better you'll know why he's doing what he's doing. You'll also be better able to anticipate his actions. 